We here at CinemaSins feel a great sense of gratitude for this movie because it inspired one of our favorite sins. The Prometheus School of Running Away From Things sin has peppered throughout our content and created an entire branch of education. Get your commemorative Prometheus Intramural t-shirt and feel confident when you run away from things. Forty-seven seconds of logos. Also, if one of your logos reminds me of a better movie before your movie has even had a chance to let me down, I don't think you're logoing correctly. Movie opens with many, many gratuitous minutes of nature porn against a pretty awesome score, which, while beautifully cinematic, may have set my expectations a bit too high. This advanced race of spacefaring aliens can engineer an entire species, but apparently can't engineer a way to introduce said species to a planet without an extremely painful ritual suicide. This movie seems to want to answer the most fundamental question in human existence, but just blah blahs the f out of all the fun explanations. Also, we'll eventually find out that our DNA is identical to the engineer, so where's my Arnold Schwarzenegger physique, Ridley? Where is it? I remember Scott pulling an Into Darkness with this movie before Benedict Conberbatch was even a thing, leaving everyone to guess whether Prometheus was an alien movie or an original IP. Fine, but the problem with doing your titles like this is that I spend the whole movie waiting for an alien to show up that isn't supposed to show up, but does kinda show up, but really shouldn't have. Charlie! He said discount Tom Hardy strangely. Come quick! The problem with come quick as a method of getting someone's attention is that no one knows if it's a come quick, your coffee is getting cold, or come quick, we found evidence that an alien jumped into a waterfall and created human life as we know it a bajillion years ago. In case you confused it with Isle of Sky from Chieftain to King. I think they want us to come and find them. They do not. And it is a galactic f***ing leap to assume they do. Even if these paintings are referring to the same constellation, they were created by humans, not aliens. This drawing could mean anything from, wow, those stars are pretty, to, holy sh**, we think the aliens that stole our children and probed our anuses came from that away, so do not go there. Look, just tell me if it's really f***ing far, okay? I didn't come here to do math. I came here to be disappointed by another legacy prequel, and damn it, I will be. Also, Destination Undisclosed is just a fancy way of telling the viewer, don't think too hard about this. We haven't. What the hell does touching the vague area of the screen with the wavy pattern do? That's some weak-ass UX design right there. They don't want my help. Whoa, sudden Patrick Wilson, who sadly doesn't return later in the movie as an alien in the form of her dead father, because that's the tale from a better script. Basket cycle balling in sandals. Also, the writers act like treadmills on a basket cycle ball court aren't a hazard for everyone except OK Go, and aren't generally a recipe for unrestrained traveling. Here's a sin for programmable androids who, inexplicably, have to visually learn sh**. Listen, there is plenty wrong with this movie, but it is undeniably, categorically f***ing beautiful. The director said, we're gonna have to hose you down and get you to do some gratuitous push-ups or else no one is going to know how much of a badass you are. Also, other than male gaze, we never get an explanation for why this door is ajar. Stop showing me vomit! Your mind and body are in a state of shock as a result of the stasis. Stasis. What the hell is that? Oh, that's just your standard Idris Elba being forced to do an American accent while the movie totally wastes him cliche. Not often found in space, but they're generally more common than you'd expect. I ain't here to be your friend. Correct! You're here to pad the body count. Also, apparently, there was an Apple shortage in the 2090s, so to stay consistent, the director asked discount Sean Harris here to be needlessly abrasive and to drink his soup weirdly, so we'd be certain he's an ass- HOLY sh That really is Sean Harris! I'm assuming the only note the production team received for this scene was school assembly, and frankly they knocked it out of the park. But does this very expensive ship not have a briefing room or any room that wouldn't require poor David to collect all the chairs afterward? My name is Peter Whalen. And I will now do a shit job explaining what is going on here, while at the same time insulting an android. Hold your applause for the end. I am recording this 22 June. 2091. Evidently, the Apple shortage even affected multi-billionaires, so they had discount ancient Guy Pierce say 22nd of June in this bizarre way, so we'd be certain he's an ass- HOLY sh**! That's actually Guy Pierce? 
Seriously, the choice to cast Guy Pierce and then bury him in prosthetics is so strange. Okay, it allows you to use actual Guy Pierce or tie in videos from the past or any further pre sequels, but that kind of feels like buying a nice car, taking a ton of photos with it, and then deliberately beating the snot out of it so you can brag about owning it longer than you actually have. Doctors Holloway and Shaw, if you would. Please stand. Either they had this seating arrangement pre-planned or there is some wild tech being used so that this hologram could beckon in the right direction of these two characters. The first is just weird and the second is underexplained. I love speculative science fiction, but predicting that Rubik's Cube would team up with the Hellraiser franchise to create a holographic display is pretty out there. Also, we just saw that this room is equipped with hollow emitters. Why is Cube? The same pictogram showing men worshipping giant beings pointing to the stars was discovered at every last one of them. I don't think I'm alone in saying that this is where the movie officially lost me. What we will come to know as engineers have visited different civilizations on Earth throughout history, interacted with them, and then either inspired them to draw cave paintings of a constellation they couldn't have known about, or told them to paint the constellation all for reasons. Why? Why is any of this happening? How did Holloway and Shaw figure it all out from paintings? And why do I get the sense that these are just the first of many unanswered questions in this movie? Just one planet with a moon capable of sustaining life. And we arrived there this morning. The prideful smile of a man that has buried the lead so far up his ass that he can almost taste it. So you're saying we're here because of a map you two kids found in a cave, is that right? No, not a map, an invitation. You can't possibly f know that! Look, I know Shaw is a person of faith, but she's also supposed to be a scientist. The movie seems determined to present her as true believer and totally forgets that an overlap between science and faith is not only possible, but more entertaining to explore! We call them engineers. Engineers? Wow. Do you mind them? Um... This character is sassy and everything about this dialogue is only here to establish sassiness. Also, I would like to point out that we never hear anything from these two guys who don't get a word in during all this fun banter about meeting God. What a weird situation they find themselves in. Almost too weird to just sit silently at the back of the class. Look, if you're willing to discount three centuries of Darwinism, that's... As much as I share Milburn's incredulity, humanity being created by the engineers doesn't really rule out Darwinism also having a part to play. Life still evolved. It was just planted first. But how do you know? Hmm? I don't. But it's what I choose to believe. Listen, we all love the X-Files, but not everything in the universe can be fox moldered into existence. Especially science, and especially, especially when you're talking about redefining the origin of life on Earth. And most infuriatingly of all, she ends up being right! Wow, nice place. It's actually a separate module with its own self-contained life support. Activate exposition droid. I'll take a vodka. Up. I blame James Bond for making people think that your choice of drink is somehow a character trait by which anyone can gain meaningful knowledge about your person. But I still blame the writers for putting it in this movie. Charlie, look. It's appalling MedPod. She said Chekhov's MedPod weird. We can't make contact. Why did you... Why did you even bring us here? Great point. Why did Waylon bring them along? Vicar says some sh** about him wanting true believers on board, but we'll eventually find out that all he wants to do is find a way to cheat death. Once he got the coordinates out of Shaw and Holloway, why wasn't he like, See you later, nerds! I'm off to find some muscular aliens and see if they've engineered the Fountain of Youth yet! Bye! I spent two years deconstructing dozens of ancient languages to their roots. I'm confident I can communicate with them you, Bender! For all you know, they could communicate using organs that we don't even possess! While yes, there may be some roots that all languages share regardless of planetary origin, it's still mighty bold to claim that you're confident in your ability to communicate with a f***ing alien! Right there. God does not build in straight lines. Fine, but he spotted the exact place they need to be by looking out the f***ing window? Why couldn't the ship's scanners have been set to sh that God couldn't have built? Captain, would you please tell the survey team to suit up and meet us in the airlock? Charles, not really in charge, has been established to mostly only have symbolic authority over what is going on here. Yet somehow that little detail is forgotten and all these assholes do suit up to recklessly follow this guy, who wears sandals but not seatbelts into a dark hole. Attention. Ramp will open in five minutes. Seems like a completely unnecessary ticking clock to me. This is a scientific expedition. No weapons. Yeah, but doing science doesn't stop you from being eaten by a wild animal, so this makes no f***ing sense. Making you guys pretty close, huh? Not too close, I hope. 
continuing to dismiss the obvious disdain the super intelligent 1000% stronger than you artificial intelligence has for your species. Entering through the back door so you have to walk the length of the vehicle hunched over when there was a closer and more convenient option. I want to know if it's natural if somebody put it there, all right? There are several of these things in a row, Mr. God does not build in straight lines. I think the answer to your question is pretty f***ing obvious. If there's anything in here worth looking at, these pops will find them. Then what the f*** are you people even doing here? I know Holloway is impatient, but someone really should have insisted that the discount Sith probes from Star Wars should check for traps, bottomless pits, and dead aliens before any humans are put at risk. Look at this. I'd like to confirm that, yes, you are watching a group of scientists casually stroll deeper and deeper into this structure as if everything they are walking past doesn't deserve to be studied more thoroughly. And the writers think we should accept this because they're on a mission from God. Charlie, don't be an idiot. Hey, don't be a skeptic. Oh yeah, who'd want to be skeptical about an alien planet? As long as the air is breathable, who cares about parasites, diseases, or a whole host of things you can't even scan for because you're on an unexplored f***ing planet! There's literally no reason to do this other than it's awkward to film people with helmets on. Charlie, I'm not wearing this thing anymore. The entire rest of this movie is Shaw learning why you don't hook up with guys that say shit like this. Also, look, we all know it. Holloway removing his helmet here is one of the dumbest things in movie history and we expect better of everyone involved. Having said that, Holloway is a loose cannon, so I'll just award the one sin for this being a step too far. I will be awarding 100 sins for each subsequent scientist that inexplicably follows his lead. You crazy bastard. Well that didn't take long. These two? As well? This isn't a scientific survey team, this is a f***ing away mission led by Captain Kirk and the cast of Sesame Street. Something's manufacturing breathable air down there. That, mate, is terraforming. No, 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 no. The bet was why we came here. No, he literally said... About a hundred credits is a terraforming survey. There's friendly banter and then there's just straight up lying. And I think Space Sorcerer Supreme should know better. Touching random goo. Whatever the f*** this is that looks cool but is never explained. Smelling random goo. How the f*** did he even know how to do that? So David presses some buttons and it activates a holographic reenactment of the engineer's escape from the facility, but why? Why would the hologram, which I would assume is for information purposes, make the viewer run along with them? This seems to have been created purely to scare the shit out of people and to be as cinematic as possible. They were right. Finding this giant alien doesn't mean shit with regards to whether or not the engineers created life on Earth. All this proves is that an alien used to live here until it was decapitated by a door. These worms will become very important, but you'll likely need the internet to tell you why. This is just another tomb. Worst archaeologist ever. You could have compromised the entire mission, not to mention almost killing yourself. The same could be said for a certain someone who took their helmet off against the advisement of just about everyone. Well, where's Bill Burnham Fifield? Aren't they back yet? Get them up for me. Hold on a second. If Yannick doesn't know where Fifield and Milburn are, that means they either both knew about the storm but didn't feel the need to communicate how f***ing lost they were, or that they somehow missed the update about the storm entirely, despite still being hooked into their comms. Either way, this is a contrived-ass way to get some face-hugging. We've been here before, Fifield. I don't know. It all looks the same to me. Says the man in charge of the mapping drones! Okay. Sample is stay now. No contagion pleasant. Um. No contagion that your computer is capable of detecting based on the scientific knowledge available to date, right? A subtle difference, but one that may save your ribcage. Do you even care if they're all dead? Do you even care about inhaling 2,000 year old dead alien skin cells and all the accompanying nasties? Because that flappy piece of fabric around your neck isn't supposed to be decorative. I think we can trick the nervous system into thinking it's still alive. Okay, but f***ing why? This man behind the curtain moment where David has a conversation in the metaverse suggests there are answers to be had in this movie, and that's just not true. What did he say, David? This sibling rivalry is interesting and deserves more attention. But with everything this movie is already unsuccessfully trying to cram into its two-hour runtime, this drama feels forced, doesn't contribute much to the plot, and never approaches a satisfying payoff. David is proudly displaying the stolen jar with all the other sciencey stuff. So does no one care that he snuck it onto the ship and is now experimenting on it? Why is nobody supervising the creepy android? DNA. Match. Oh, f*** you. No it isn't. I mean, I know it is. It's just all the bullsh** that any of Shaw and Holloway's predictions were actually correct based on nothing more than those f***ing cave drawings. 
Was Wayland expecting to find the jars of black goo? This might just be android confidence, but David seems to know exactly what to expect from the aliens and what their contents do. F you, movie. F you for expecting me to believe David would think dipping his finger into Holloway's drink would go unnoticed. And f you for Holloway not noticing David's finger being dipped directly into his drink. He is looking right at the glass. What is your position? Asking for their position when this hollow map thing is already giving you their position. We are at 74014.77. Well, if you can tell him your location, how were you ever f***ing lost? It's reading life for him. Yannick doesn't tell anyone else about this. He writes it off as a glitch instead of telling, oh, I don't know, the f***ing scientist that came here searching for alien life. The fact that we still like this character later has everything to do with performance and very little to do with the script. There is nothing special about the creation of life, right? Anybody can do it. He says, after finding proof that alien giants did it just the one time. Elizabeth Shaw, you are the most special person I Skip! What's all this black stuff? Sure is lucky for the movie that the two sh licks who have no f***ing clue where they're going end up exactly where the plot needs them to be to get murdered. You need to stay calm because she is beautiful. Milburn immediately forgets all those dead bodies they saw a moment ago and the life form readings they were freaking out about because as it turns out, his character was too smart to die in a stupid way and the writers had to rectify that. Holloway sees this and does f*** all about it, like seeking medical attention or immediately quarantining himself so that he doesn't kill everyone, including his f***ing girlfriend. Also, we've got black goop that does weird sh to people's bodies and may or may not give them superpowers. At this point, this is just as likely to be an X-Files sequel as it is an Alien prequel. Futuristic UI graphic or desktop fidget spinner, you decide. David gets very lucky that the glitching probe just so happens to lead him to the room that contains exactly what he's looking for. Okay, the fact that it's detecting a life form probably told him this was the right way, but he's still very fortunate that he was allowed to go off on his own and investigate, especially considering this is exactly what Holloway and Shaw are looking for. Soft-boiled egg buttons. I don't know what would be more frustrating to learn, that David immediately knows what this thing is and even what buttons to push to turn it on, or that he hasn't got a f***ing clue what he's doing and randomly pushing buttons works. Oh sure, the random sequence of buttons that David presses activated an expositional hologram that tells him exactly what he needs to know about this room, and this movie can go f*** off and die and sacrifice itself in a waterfall. Using a jazz flute to operate your spaceship. David seems to be able to interact with whatever this green stuff is and this holographic version of Earth, which suggests that the holographic recording started this shit up and is able to affect its environment. F***ing how? And f***ing why? Does that mean that if the recording went long enough it could accidentally launch the ship? F***ing how I say? And f***ing why? Writers thought a good defining characteristic for the Swiss Army manservant would be creeping on people while they're sleeping. I'm telling you, stay back! No, Do it. Oh, so now he cares about not spreading the infection? Sir, that ship has sailed, made port at Pointless Sacrifice Island, and the crew is currently getting f***ed by mermaids who will eat their heads post-copulation. I'm not sure if that makes my point, but it sure is a fun image. Also, murder. Well, Doctor. It's not exactly a traditional fetus. Was this really David's plan all along? How could David have known that they would have sex last night? How could he know that the black goo would transmit via sex? Okay, maybe this is all David experimenting, but he stumbled onto a f***ing gold mine with his very first test subject. She's totally doped. Prepare her. Dr. Shaw decides to not be totally doped anymore. So, no more chasing? No one thinks it's necessary to pursue the person carrying a 10-pound parasite in their body that's actually killed one person, and quite possibly two others? Cool, cool, cool. Sure! Meredith, paranoid about every f***ing thing Vickers, has not only left her own private condo unlocked, but she's also left her emergency medical pod totally available for walk-in appointments, too. Honestly, I'm shocked she didn't panic room herself in there hours ago. Error. This med pod is calibrated for male patients only and does not offer the procedure you have requested. Convenient Tech conveniently can't do a procedure that it can and does end up doing anyway. Because suspense! Surgery. Abdominal. <laughs> Penetrating injuries. Foreign body. Movie is really making an end run around just saying kids. 
not acknowledging the terror of waking up with your genitals bandaged. Seriously, why did David replace her underwear with ace bandages? Just giving her new underwear was an option and it's less creepy. Get it off! Come on! This whole med pod surgery sequence is all of the ridiculous, but it's tense as hell and Numi Rapaz is f***ing incredible. Sadly though, we can't show most of it due to it being legally declared as too f***ing awesome for internet consumption. That being said, why isn't it knocking her out for this very invasive procedure? It's like they sprung for the automated surgeon but cheaped out when it came to the automated anesthesiologist. <laughs> Shaw's internal organs survived this. Hey Wallace, take a look at this. You better come and take a look at this cliche. Also, why did Resident Evil Alien here pull a Samara from the ring and then decide to straighten out and f everyone up? What's with the unnecessary gymnastic flex? Also, also, why did it f***ing wait so long to attack? Did the black goo give him an enhanced sense of dramatic timing too? So Fifield becomes a zombie with super strength because the black goop is an agent of chaos and chooses to obey neither science nor God. You're on the ship all this time. Why? I only have a few days of life left in me here. Want to waste them. Yeah, I think she understands the benefits of stasis for long journeys. I think the confusion is over why the f he felt the need to keep it a secret. Regardless of his actual agenda, would it really have been so strange to just say that he wants to see the creators of humanity as well? They aren't what we thought they were. I was wrong. We were so wrong. No, you weren't. She predicted the engineers created humans, and they did. The only difference is that they were all killed before she got a chance to ask them any questions. All things considered, she was frustratingly accurate. Those uh, engineers, this ain't their home. It's an installation. Maybe even military. Movie does give us a plausible theory about what is happening here, but pretty much ends any attempt at explaining itself right there. And they put it out here in the middle of nowhere because they're not stupid enough to make weapons of mass destruction on their own doorstep. But then they painted directions to the location of their WMDs and caves all around the earth for thousands of years like they were bragging about it. Movie either wants the engineers to be really smart or really dumb, and I don't think it knows which it's gonna be. They made it here, it got out. It turned on him. The end. I wish, Captain Exposition, but sadly we still have almost 30 minutes left of confusing twists and this line is about all the explanation we get for any of it. Anything else? No. <sighs> Father. Oh. Who the f*** cares? You can take your helmet off if you like, sir. Ah, uh, the sin that keeps on sinning. There's a ship. Honestly, Michael York's character in Austin Powers was more subtle. Leaving to go where? Earth. Why? Sometimes to create, one must first destroy. Okay, I see that you're not going to be giving any actual answers, so what reason do I have to even keep watching? And you can speak to him? I believe I can. No, you f***ing can't, okay? Even if David took snippets of language from that recording he saw earlier and called in a favor with Charles Xavier to borrow his universal translator from the USS Enterprise, he did not f***ing learn how to talk to them. Tell him we came, just like he asked. Why do you hate us? You don't know that he asked, and you don't know that he hates you. I suppose it's not a true alien film until we get some milky android blood. It's carrying death, and it's headed for us. Yannick, please believe me, please. What's to believe? He was watching all that go down, and earlier on he literally said, I can't bring none of that back home with us, and I'll do whatever I have to to see that it doesn't. So why are we even having this conversation? I can handle this myself. Feel free to join Miss Vix. <gasps> Reminding us that a story about the adventures of these three skipping across the galaxy, creating mischief and bringing justice to the unjust would have been much more enjoyable. Maybe this lifeboat wasn't meant to be ejected so low to the ground, but it still sucks way more at landing than I think anyone expected. Welcome one and all to the 10 year anniversary of the opening of the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. As you can see, the festivities have already begun with a rather stunning aerial display, and it won't be long until the main event that you've all been waiting for. Here we go! My goodness, such athleticism, such poise, such utter and complete obliviousness to the lateral alternatives available. You have to admire the absolute commitment to the idiocy that can only be found at this fine institution. Shaw's escape is thwarted as she is knocked down by a light gust of wind, which isn't the worst thing about the movie, but it's still pretty bad. The last half hour of this movie has been mostly Elizabeth surviving things, followed up by the writers finding ways to make her run towards more danger. I'm tired and think we both would appreciate a nap. Or answers!
but I'd take the nap. You need to get out immediately. David's head survived this. He's coming for you. Who's coming? I know David is pronoun gaming pretty hard here, but who the f*** does she think he means? It's hardly going to be Waylon's ancient ass that he's going to be warning her about, is it? Hey, remember practical effects? They were fun. Wonder whatever happened to those. I'm sorry, Charlie. I can't do it. I think it's safe to say he doesn't care anymore, and neither do I. Where's my cross? Priorities. I don't want to go back to where we came from. I want to go where they came from. Yeah, let's go! Okay, this movie was confusing as balls, but I'm pretty excited to see what Dr. Shaw does next. May her adventures be long, fruitful, and covered by many movies to... We're never going to see her again, are we? I'm sorry. Apologizing to the disembodied robot head that experimented on your boyfriend without consent, causing him to impregnate you with a parasitic alien. I think he had this coming. I suppose there was no way the movie was going to be able to resist this pre-credits, post-credits scene, but why the f*** is this proto-alien emerging almost fully grown? What happened to the thing that skittered out of John Hurt? And I don't care if this is all cleared up in Covenant, the point is I'm watching this movie, and it feels way more interested in playing in the alien universe than it does explaining any of it. Did you see what God just did to us, man? God didn't do that, you did it. This series will celebrate the natural wonders that remain and reveal what we must preserve to ensure people and nature thrive. No. For those of you I hired personally, I hate you. There's a man sitting with you today. His name is Barf. Never had to follow a ghost before. Okay. I'm taking this cube thing with me. The same pictogram showing men worshipping giant beings pointing to the stars was discovered at every last one of them. So now we got a huge guy theory and a serial crusher theory. But how do you know? Hmm? I don't. But it's what I choose to believe. I'm surrounded by idiots. We are now mapping. Life forms. You tiny little life forms. You precious little life phone. Where are you? I'm attempting to open the door. Hey, don't open that! It's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! I want to see it. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Please state the nature of the medical emergency. This is the instrument of your liberation. I shall call him Squishy and he shall be mine. And he shall be my Squishy. Come here, Squishy. Come here, little Squishy. Ow!